Hey guys, it's Tyler Cristofoli from SPEC, and we're going to talk a little bit about troponin. Uh, what exactly is troponin and why do we care? Uh, we know we hear the word troponin a lot when we're going on interfacility transports and we're taking someone to a cath lab. So we're going to dive in right into it and uh, figure out exactly what troponin is. So we're going to start off, uh, we're going to take one cell out of the heart. So I got my nice little heart that I drew here, and we're going we're gonna to dial in. We're going to take one little cell right here, and we're going to look at it. All right, so we have our one heart cell, and the heart cells are called myocytes that we know. And inside the myocyte, we have a bunch of little myofibrils that we can see in here. And each one of these myofibrils, uh, we're going to zoom in, and we're going to actually look at the different uh, components of that. All right, so we're inside the myofibril, and inside we have, and I, I drew this out just so it's uh, easier to understand, we have two sets of bands. We have the Z band and the M band. Um, if we look on our left, we see the actin unit, and on the right is the myosin unit. And these are uh, inside the myofibril, and they kind of lay right along each other. Their resting position, they kind of overlapped, and our goal is to get these to bind with each other in a power stroke in order to create a contraction. So let's zoom in a little further to see how we can make these two bands bind with each other in order to uh, cause a contraction. All right, so we zoomed in a little closer, and if we look on the myosin side, we see this long filament right here, and each one has these little protruding uh, bands coming off of it. And then we look up here at our actin, and we see another long band, and we see it's kind of got some intertwined lines there in a, a tropomyosin, which we'll talk about in a second. So now let's zoom in a little further to see how are we going to bind these? How are we going to get these to bind with each other? All right, here we go. So here's where the troponin comes into play. So here's our myosin on the bottom down here, and then our actin is up at the top. And we need to get this S, uh, this S1 head right here is what this is called. It kind of looks like a broken heart. We need to get that to bind with this troponin C. And if you look over here, the TNC, the TNC, that's the uh, like the burgundy colored one up there. And this has a very high affinity for calcium. So in order to get the S1 head to bind with the troponin C, we need a rush of calcium to come in and we need ATP for this to happen as well. So in this area right here, this is the troponin complex. And so we have if the tan one is our troponin T, the burgundy one is our troponin C, and the yellow one is our troponin I. The troponin I is responsible for deactivating the uh, S1 head after the contraction. The uh, troponin C is responsible for uh, binding the S1 head. And then we have our troponin T, which kind of gets our tropomyosin out of the way in order for that binding to occur. And our tropomyosin is, uh, is our kind of a peach colored. You have to bear with me, I'm colorblind, so if that's not peach, then I'm sorry. But, and in order for this to happen, we need a rush of calcium. So when our, you know, in our action potential, when we have our rush of calcium, and this is not just one of these, there's tons of these little troponin complexes all along the actin filament. And uh, when that happens, that's what causes that power stroke in order for the Z band and the uh, M band to bind with each other. So troponin is just a comp is one of the enzymes that cause this contraction to happen within the heart. Now, what's specific about troponin I and T are these are more so found in the these in the heart. These are more cardiac related. Uh, T and T will elevate even with uh, CPR or uh, maybe some sort of chest trauma where your T and I, your troponin I, will only elevate if there is ischemia or coronary occlusion or even a, a really, really bad pulmonary embolism that's affecting the, uh, the right side of the heart. So here's just a couple of facts about troponin. Uh, troponin is going to peak. It's, it's highest it's going to go is going to be right around 12 to 16 hours. So that's when we're going to see our highest troponin levels. 
Um, you'll notice when they come into the ER, they'll probably start taking troponin every about two to four hours to watch for a rise or to see if it's going down. They can kind of tell exactly where they are in the process of the, uh, in the event of an MI. And this is going to stay elevated for up to two weeks. So uh, if a patient, you know, had a heart attack and um, you know, they're coming in, you can kind of, this is going to stay elevated for a while. So up to two weeks, it's normal to see an elevation in your troponin. And it rises two to four hours after an MI. So if we get a patient in the early stages of an MI and we, you know, that we might not see a rise in troponin yet, it might take a little while. So just because you don't see that rise in troponin doesn't mean that the patient isn't having an MI. An MI. Um, when we look at our values, and we'll talk about troponin I here because that's the most common one that we use, um, anything, you want it to be less than 0 0.10 nanograms per ml. And if you think about a nanogram, how small that is, um, 1 milligram equals 1,000 micrograms, and 1 microgram equals 1,000 nanograms. So we're talking a very, very, very small measurement here. And so what happens is when that cell gets damaged, that troponin get released from the actin as they, uh, through the degradation. And as it happens, that's when we start seeing more troponin getting released into the, uh, into the, into the circulatory system. And that's how we can see if we're having a, uh, some sort of ischemia, is when those troponins actually break off and become absorbed into the circulatory system. So I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the box below. And thank you for supporting SPEC. Made with DoodleCast Pro.